Hello fellow entrepreneurs! Welcome to my channel where I read and summarize books relating to being a better entrepreneur. I met no one who I thought was wise who didn't read. I believe reading is essential for those who seek to rise above the ordinary. So today, we will be learning from George Samuel Clayson's book, The Richest Man in Babylon. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Once upon a time in ancient Babylon, there was a wealthy man named Arkad. He was, in fact, the wealthiest man in the country. Two of his childhood friends approached him, curious as to how he'd become so wealthy while they struggled to feed their families despite working very hard. Arkad smiled and told them that he had once been told the secret to wealth by another wealthy man in exchange for his services. A portion of everything you earn is yours to keep, was the secret. To put it another way, you should not spend all of your money, but rather invest it wisely. Arkad had started by saving enough money to lend to a shield maker, who then paid interest on the loan, thereby increasing Arkad's wealth. There are parables like this one in The Richest Man in Babylon that we will distill from this book. Part 1. Saving and investing wisely is the key to accumulating wealth. Have you ever wondered why some people are more successful than others at accumulating wealth? Is it because they are frugal and save every penny they earn, whereas others squander their earnings on a variety of useless things? In fact, the key to becoming wealthy is to strike a balance between these two extremes. You must not only hoard money, but also know how to use it wisely. Of course, the first step is to put money aside. Obviously, this means you won't be able to spend all of your money, and will have to live on a budget. Perhaps you can cut back on those little luxuries in life, such as the city weekend in Paris you had planned, or the quilted luxury toilet paper you bought. But, saving money like this will not enable you to become wealthy. You should look for investment opportunities as well. This is due to the fact that the money in your mattress will not appreciate in value. Even depositing it in a bank will yield a pitiful return. Instead, you should put your money into something that will grow your wealth, such as stocks, government bonds, or startup funding. If you do it correctly, your savings will grow in value without any additional effort on your part. When you do make an investment, make sure it's a good one. Only put your money in the hands of people who know what they're doing. For example, you should not give money to a plumber who claims to be starting a diamond buying and selling business. Putting your money into a venture or a low-cost index fund to invest wisely can make sense. Part 2. The key to financial success is to admit how little you know all of the time. Do you consider yourself to be an expert? If that's the case, you're in for a rude awakening. True wisdom is recognizing and admitting how little you actually know. Socrates, the ancient philosopher, regarded himself as wise because he admitted, I know that I know nothing. This philosophy should also apply when learning new things. Don't fool yourself into thinking you know everything right away. Instead, take a moment to look around. It's a fact of life that gaining new knowledge simultaneously reveals new areas of ignorance, if we choose to notice them. For example, once you understand the fundamentals of relativity theory, you can't help but run into its more complicated and sophisticated areas, which makes you realize there's still a lot you don't know. In fact, you now perceive yourself to be even more ignorant than before. Unfortunately, most people, especially in the field of finance, are unaware of how little they know. In fact, most adults struggle to use even basic financial formulas, such as calculating compound interest. Worse, they have a habit of rushing ahead with their limited knowledge, without pausing to consider all of the areas in which they are lacking. Some people, for example, learned the fundamentals of investing in risky subprime mortgages and believed they knew enough to profit from them, but they failed spectacularly in 2008 because they had not taken the time to learn more about their investment. They neglected to inquire about the instrument's long-term viability and riskiness. If you go the extra mile and study finance, you'll be able to profit from the ignorance of those who didn't. This could, for example, assist you in spotting investment opportunities ahead of time or executing profitable trades with them. Part 3. You can only accumulate wealth over time by learning through trial and error. Many people fantasize about becoming wealthy overnight. But, aside from winning the lottery, there's a slim chance this will happen. Gaining wealth is a long process that involves many small steps forward and, more often than not, a few setbacks. But why is that the case? Why does accumulating wealth take so long? Simply because the world, especially the financial world, is constantly changing. This means you'll never be able to pick a single wealth-building strategy, such as investing in a specific stock, and sit back and watch the money roll in. Because the financial system and life in general is so unpredictable, something major such as the stock market collapsing will occur sooner or later. This means you'll have to adjust to your new circumstances and learn new wealth-building strategies, experimenting with them and most likely failing at a few. 
And just when you think you've figured out your next winning strategy, something huge happens. However, as you gain more knowledge, you will improve your overall ability to invest wisely through this process of experience and adaptation. In fact, this trial and error method is similar to how scientists make progress. Failed experiments can be just as useful as successful ones. So, if you make a bad investment in subprime mortgages, for example, you might learn so much that you can then make a good one in the same field. However, don't forget that trial and error entails making mistakes by definition. This means you need to make sure your mistakes are minor, and you shouldn't invest money you can't afford to lose in an area where you're unsure. Part 4. Earning Money versus Accumulating Money What do you think the distinction is between earning money and accumulating money? If you're like the majority of people, you probably had no idea there was one. But there is an important distinction to be made. Making money refers to a process in which you work for money, whereas achieving wealth refers to a situation in which money works for you. Consider the following scenario. You are the manager of a profitable factory, and you earn a good salary every month. Obviously, you're making money, but are you wealthy? Definitely not. To do so, you'll need to start saving and investing some of your money. For example, if you set aside a portion of your income and invest it in real estate, you will become wealthy because your money will work for you rather than against you. Making money is usually done with the goal of achieving short-term financial success. You only care about what you can buy with your next paycheck, and the future is unimportant. However, there is a risk in this way of thinking. What if the next paycheck never comes? Obtaining wealth, on the other hand, necessitates the pursuit of longer-term objectives. For example, the real estate you purchased will not provide you with immediate wealth. Instead, you will have to pay off the investment or wait for its value to rise. This may take some time, but once the investment begins to pay off, it will most likely continue to do so for the duration of your ownership. This type of long-term planning can help provide security in the event of unforeseen circumstances, such as losing your job. Part 5. Making investments that pay off with interest can be extremely profitable. If you borrow money, such as a student loan, you will almost certainly have to pay interest on it. When you lend someone money, you can expect them to pay interest, and this is one of the most common ways for those with money to increase their wealth. To comprehend why paying interest is unavoidable, you must first recognize that money, like employees or raw materials, is a resource. Assume you want to open a factory. What exactly do you require? Naturally, you'll require raw materials as well as manpower to manufacture your goods. You will, of course, have to pay for these resources. But you'll also require capital, which will be used to construct the factory. Capital, like any other resource, is a finite resource that must be paid for. To attract employees, you must offer a salary. And to attract capital, you must offer investors something in the form of interest. Interest is an appealing way to build wealth as an investor because of its compound nature. You can get your interest earnings to increase over time by earning interest on top of interest. Consider this scenario. You invest $100,000 in a new business, and the owner promptly repays you the original amount, plus 10% interest totaling $110,000. Then you decide to put the entire sum into a new business with the same terms. When you get the money back, plus 10% interest, you'll get $121,000. Your interest earnings have increased. This process can be repeated indefinitely, earning ever-increasing interest. As you can see, your money not only works around the clock for you, but it also gets better at what it does over time. Then you'll learn how good fortune and hard work are linked. Opportunity is a source of good fortune that can be pushed to occur more frequently than chance. What do you think of when you hear the word luck? Many people believe that luck is made up of random, serendipitous events. Is this, however, always true? Assume you're in a tennis tournament. You've been practicing for months and have thoroughly prepared. Finally, you win the final by clipping the top of the net, causing the ball to bounce just out of your opponent's reach. Part 6. Luck versus Chance was it a stroke of luck? Of course not, you had worked hard for that good fortune. When people refer to random luck, they're really referring to chance. Something random and uncontrollable happens by chance, such as winning the lottery or being struck by lightning. Because luck isn't truly random, it needs to be distinguished from chance. People, on the other hand, work hard for it and earn it. So what can you do to improve your luck? Simply by being on the lookout for ways to improve your financial situation. Consider an entrepreneur who is interested in consumer technology and spends time reading trend reports, analyzing the global financial situation, and reaching out to innovators in her network every day. She reads one day that VR glasses are expected to be the next big thing. 
And the next day, she hears from an inventor in her network who has discovered a way to make VR glasses for half the price. Naturally, she seizes the opportunity and begins manufacturing televisions, quickly becoming a huge success. This stroke of luck was clearly the result of her hard work, vigilance, and willingness to seize the opportunity. Part 7. Importance of Hard Work Work hard to recognize opportunities and seize them without delay. The Boy Scouts' motto is probably familiar to you. Be prepared. You should follow it as well if you want to find new ways to increase your wealth. You saw how looking for and seizing opportunities can bring you good luck, but you also saw how letting opportunities slip through your fingers can bring you bad luck, missed opportunities, and, if only I had, stories. So, why do people pass up chances? It is far too often due to their procrastination. For example, if the entrepreneur had decided not to invest in the new VR technology and instead waited for it to prove itself and gain traction, the inventor would almost certainly have found another investor. You can't wait for opportunities to come knocking on your door. You have to be proactive and seize them or you'll miss out. Simply put, if you want to increase the number of opportunities you see, you must work hard. Study and research the areas you're interested in and build a network so you'll be better able to recognize and appreciate opportunities when they come up. Remember, even if you work hard, golden opportunities are few and far between. This means you may have to wait a while, which can be discouraging because your hard work appears to be in vain. However, when an opportunity does present itself, your perseverance will pay off. Consider an entrepreneur who has developed a radio that does not require any electricity. She spends a lot of time perfecting her product before pitching it to investors. Every potential investor rejects it for a year, claiming, who listens to the radio nowadays? Despite her disappointments, she perseveres until an investor realizes that the product is ideal for developing countries with inadequate power grids. Her patience paid off when the product went on to become a huge success. Part 8. Make sound financial decisions and avoid taking on debt. Have you ever wondered how some people manage to get themselves into financial trouble? Typically, it's due to their irrational financial decisions. So, what are your options for avoiding this? First and foremost, you must base all expenditure and cost decisions on a realistic assessment of your personal needs and financial situation. Let's say you're desperate for a new flashy car. You don't really need it, and purchasing it would necessitate taking out a large loan with very bad terms. Obviously, you should not get it, but let's pretend you do. You're now devoting the majority of your income to repaying the interest, and you'll eventually reach the point where you must repay the principal. You can't afford it, so you take out a second loan to pay off the first. You've suddenly found yourself in a debt trap, and you'd better hope that the flash car is also a comfortable place to sleep. In fact, taking on debt is a bad idea in general because it prevents you from saving money to invest and build wealth. Instead, you'll use your earnings to pay off your debt. Surprisingly, this can also be detrimental to creditors because it denies debtors the opportunity to increase their wealth. This puts them in a financial bind, and they may default on the debt entirely, which is every creditor's worst nightmare. Greece, for example, was heavily indebted to the European Central Bank during the recent Eurozone crisis. Because the country had to make debt payments, it was unable to invest in areas such as schools, infrastructure, transportation, and other areas that would benefit the economy in the long run. Without these investments, the country would never be able to repay its debts completely. This could lead to defaults, which would be detrimental to both parties. As a result, creditors may find it prudent to suspend debt payments in some cases to allow their debtors to reclaim their financial footing. So the key to becoming wealthy is to live below your means in order to save money and invest a portion of it in a way that pays your interest. You must also realize that by working hard and seizing opportunities boldly, you can earn your luck. This wraps up the summary from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon by George Samuel Clayson. Thank you for sticking out through the very end of this video. Nothing helps out my channel more than y'all watching the entire video. These videos take a long time to make, and is a labor of love. If you would like to contribute by buying me a cup of coffee, I'll leave the link below along with the link to this book. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and watch these videos that might pique your interest. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, keep reading.